Welcome, welcome. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is August 30th. It is Tuesday. Now, my sincere apologies. I didn't get a video out yesterday on Monday. I did have one all planned. Oh, yes, I did. It was called the A-Team. I had a bunch of stocks that all started with the letter A. Just coincidentally, I didn't go looking for that. It just kind of fell together. But we had a big rainstorm come blowing through Michigan around 10 to 4, took out our power. It didn't come back on until around 8.30, 9 o'clock. So there was nothing I could do. Now, there are a couple of those A stocks that we're going to look at today because I think they're still worthy of considering. They are penny stocks, of course they are, because that's what we do on this show. We look at OTC and penny stocks that have potential. We might be looking for a chart setup. We might be just listening to the buzz online, or you might just be tapping into the news on a daily basis. That's news I've looked at over the last five days. Oldest is at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. Now, all of that news comes from the OTC market. Now, those are all penny stocks, but you got to remember, any stock under $5 is a penny stock, and there are bunches of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So we're going to easily be looking at those kind of stocks as well. Now, right now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I always do my research on an OTC stock. This is where I start every single time because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. I can't make it any clearer. It's never outdated. And if by chance you can't find what you're looking for here, then go out to Google and waste some time looking for that one piece of current information. Otherwise, make your research easy and quick. Start here at the OTC Markets. So let's take a look at how our OTC markets finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this button, make sure we have current numbers here. Oh, good. They did jump. Oh, yes. Now, I did get to see how the market finished yesterday, even though I didn't get to see it close. We were over 10 billion shares. We have been under that for a while, and it's, it's hard. We really do need to be up over that, and, well, we've been under it for so bloody long that anything over it is exciting. And today, we got some excitement. 11.3 billion. It's not a lot over it but it's growing we got to get our market to grow our trades were over 250,000 it's a start we would love to get higher but we'll take it and our dollar volume is still low we're still under 2.1 billion dollars which is our average and I've said it before I really don't see that the dollar volume changes how the market reacts but the bottom line is the more money that's in the market the better it is for everybody so yeah I'd like to see that one go up too all right, so I've got some stocks we're going to look at now. We've got a couple of those A's from yesterday and a couple of new stocks I want to share with you today. Let's go see what I got. All right, I got a real cool stock here for you. We were going to share this with you yesterday, but things happened. This is ticker AKLI, Alkali Inc. Now, I didn't know anything about this company, but one of our loyal viewers, Thanum M, shared it with me. And boy, is it a hot pick. This company just came on the market through a reverse merger with another company, obviously, on August 22nd. But the company's been around for over a decade. Now, this is one of the only companies in America that has a federally approved digital medicine. You heard me correct, digital medicine. And I'll get more into that in just a second. Now, she is on the NASDAQ. Remember, any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock. And we're still there. She finished today at $4.16 with barely 1% gains. She has not been running. Truth of the matter is, when she came on the market, her IPO price was $35 a share. Yes, and she jumped up to $54 pre-market, as you'll see on the charts. And as soon as the bell rang, she started to fall, and she tumbled all the way down here. My impression, if she came on the market at $35, she's definitely worth more than $4. If she got pushed to $54, she's worth more than $4. But if she's got digital medicine, which is one of the only companies federally approved, I think she's got more to give. I think that price is real, real low right now. Now, let me give you some information about this company. We're going to jump on over to a news press just so you can see what the company is about. Alkali is pioneering the development of cognitive treatments through game-changing technologies. Our approach of leveraging technologies designed to directly target the brain establishes a new category of medicine. Medicine that is validated through clinical trials, just like drugs or medical devices, but experienced like entertainment. Boy, 
Medicine that tastes good. Imagine that. Alkalize platform is powered by proprietary therapeutic engines designed to target cognitive impairment at its source in the brain. Informed by decades of research and validated through rigorous clinical programs. Driven by Alkali's belief that effective medicine can also be fun and engaging. Alkali's products are delivered through captivating action video game experiences. And this is the product right here, Endeavor RX. They tell us that Endeavor RX is the first and only FDA clear treatment delivered through a video game experience. Endeavor RX is indicated to improve attention function as measured by computer-based testing in children ages to 8 to 12 years old with primarily inattentive or combined type ADHD who have demonstrated attention issues. Endeavor RX is available by prescription only. It is not intended to be used as a standalone therapeutic and is not a substitution for child's medication. The most common side effect observed in children in Endeavor RX's clinical trials was a feeling of frustration, as the game can get quite challenging at times. No serious adverse events were associated with its use. Endeavor RX is recommended to be used for approximately 25 minutes a day, five days a week over an initial four consecutive week period. Now, the prescription was a problem. How do you get a prescription of this out? How did they exactly set this up? And we can get that information right here in this article. Now, this article talks about other companies as well as Alkali. And if you're interested in Alkali, there is lots of information out there. Not news presses, articles, lots of information, juicy stuff. Now, this covers a lot of information, but I've just come here because they do talk about the prescriptions. But as I said, they talk about other companies as well doing the same thing. You didn't know there were, did you? Yeah, we got one other company on the market, PEAR. They, too, have an FDA-cleared software product. Now, here's the biggest hurdle for Pear and Alkali. Both of these companies have got digital medicines, not to be confused with therapeutic digital products. There are lots of digital therapy products out there, things to help you manage your anger, manage your appetite. You know, they're re-educating you. That's not what these are. These are medicines. They're actually getting into your brain, stimulating neural paths, new growth, new habits, so that we act differently. And that's what medicines do. They make us act differently. Now, I'm over here particularly to show you about the prescriptions. I got it highlighted. There we go. They tell us here you can't just go send the prescription to Walgreens or CVS and have them know what to do with it. I think that day is coming, but it's not here yet. And it's pretty much the same thing with specialty pharmacies. Doctors just don't necessarily know exactly which pharmacy to send a prescription to. So Alkali has spent the last year overhauling its fulfillment process. The company has partnered with one pharmacy where physicians can send in prescriptions via the phone, fax, or through their electronic health record, which ends up with the patient's caregiver being texted an activation code. And that activation code is good for the download of Endeavor RX, which you can get over here at Google Play or Apple. Get your activation code, then you can start using this, and it's supposed to be used in conjunction with your medication. Now, they want to market this through the medical community, not directly to the consumers. From what I understand, Pear was marketing theirs directly to the consumer at about $900. This could be marketed to consumers for about $250. They're going to have insurance companies pay for it at about $340. And there's a lot of families already using insurance for ADHD medication for their kids. This would just be put into the same regimen. It would just all be covered. So there is a lot of potential for this product as far as I'm concerned. It seems every kid is getting tagged. He's jumping around. He's not paying attention. Yeah, he's acting like a kid. In either case, I think the product could be very hot. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, let's jump on over to the quote and see. <laughs> she actually did less. Less volume today than yesterday. Today she did 1.2 million. Yesterday she did 1.4 million. Share structure for this company? All right, we don't have a float listed here. I did go look it up. It appears to be just roughly about 22 and a half million shares are in the float, which isn't too bad. They are a shell company. They don't have any money coming in right now. 
The company has been around doing research and development for about a decade. And the reason they actually put themselves on the market was to generate some capital. They wanted $163 million and they have plans how to spend that money so they can move this product out there and start making money. And that's all happened. Uh, let's see what we have for disclosures. I don't think there's anything new down here. Oh, we do have one, uh, SC13D. I did glance at this. This had something to do with the lockup period for the shares for the management, which is important, but I don't think it's going to have anything to do with the stock running. Matter of fact, there is no real catalyst right now, right? You've just got a new type of business. They're going to carve a whole new section for themselves in the medical sector for digital medicine. And I just don't think it's caught wind yet. I don't think people understand it. But as I said, it started at $35, went to 54 and fell down less than $4, which is when I got in because I think this thing is going to go back up and up and up. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is a 20-day, one-hour chart for AKLI, and we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim. It's a free trading platform, so if you like it or you need one, go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free account. You don't have to give them any money. Just keep your account open, and you can use this anytime you like. So that's all the chart there is for this company, AKLI. She did the reverse merger with DNAA. The company doesn't exist anymore. That ticker fell away. This is what we have now. So you can see on August 22nd, before the bell rang, the game was already ensuing. I mean, she was blazed up here at 53. What happened to the $35 IPO price? I don't even see it here. All we got is our high. A tumble in pre-market continued to fall after the bell and fell all the way down to four dollars from 54 down to four whoa what a sad day and she has just been skimming across the floor all this time we did have one jump and bump right here you can see all the volume came in i'm sure people got excited thinking this was going to be the run back up to 30 and 40 50 dollars and it may have been but in my opinion i think the smas were still too high still too much of a slant I think when the price is going sideways and the SMAs come right on top of their heads like that, that's when you're going to get a jump. And I think we should be looking at this tomorrow and the next day. I think there's a possibility. Now, folks, I'll be honest. It's a wild card play. We don't have a lot of history on the chart. We don't have a lot of history with the company or the product. This is, They are carving a whole new area for themselves in the medical sector. And the community is going to have to accept them. But I think if they can get over the hurdle, this could be huge. Now, I don't know if it's going to run tomorrow, next week, or next year. But I do think this is the cusp of new things to come digital medicine and they're going to be marketing this immediately that's what all their money is for they're not in research and development anymore you saw it up on apple or google play so it's already out there so i like this stock i really like this stock i think it's going to surprise a lot of us and it does look like it's at a breakout point right now i'm not saying it looks powerful but i see a lot of stocks jump once those smas get on their heads now, even though this isn't a penny stock, I thought it was worthy of looking at. We've been talking about GGII these last couple of days, which is a penny stock. And she spun out Hempaco today onto the NASDAQ. She started her shares at $6 and she only had 1 million of them to sell. Now, as far as I was concerned, this was almost like an experiment. We have seen a lot of Chinese companies coming onto the market with super low floats and no warrants. And these things are skyrocketing. They are starting under 10 dollars and they're going hundreds if not thousands of dollars so this was the first american company the first cannabis company that we have seen do this now i call it cannabis but they're really not they are into hemp cbd cbg they're making alternatives to cigarettes hemp cigarettes cbd cigarettes stuff like that so she finished the day today at seven dollars and 78 cents with about 30 percent gains now, there's not a whole lot of information to look at here, so let's just run on over to the chart. Boy, oh boy, what's with these stocks hitting highs before the bell and then crashing? This is ticker HPCO. It's a one-day chart. That's all there is here. 
You can't see it, but she did start off at $6 and it was bid up pre-market. You don't see any of that. By the time the bell rang, she was already at $41.80. Now, I tried to get into this. I sure did. It would not take a market order. I had to put in a limit order. And being at $6, I didn't know what price to put in. So I put in $14. Not even close. It was backwards, $41. She fell hard. She did hit a low here of like $12.82. I could have got in then if I wanted to. But to be honest, after she fell and went sideways all this time, I just turned my attention to something else. But I thought it would be interesting to see how she played out today. She did start off high and she is now down here at $7 and still getting aftermarket activity. I see our 50 day SMA has come into the picture and it is creeping down to the price looking again like that last stock getting right on the heads of the bars. So maybe Maybe we'll see a jump out of this. It does have a very tempting float of 1 million shares. And Hempaco is not a no-name company. They are making money. They got lots of companies they're doing business with. So get a few tweets out there. Get the right piece of news. With 1 million shares, this bad boy could move. And I'm still wondering about the dividends for GGII. This is a spin out. Nobody has said anything about that yet. So... I would keep my eye on GGII's news as well. Now, we did already look at this stock. I was actually going to share it again with you yesterday because it was running yesterday. And it's running again today. And I'm going to share it with you again because I think this stock has got something to give. This is ticker ARSND. The D means they're going through some sort of changes. And most of the changes are already done. A filing came out explaining what was going to happen. This company, which was originally called Aureus Inc., bought Yuling's Ice Cream Corporation from the Yuling family. Now, if you're familiar with the word Yuling, it's probably from the beer. They were making the beer for about 150 years before Prohibition, and then they had to stop so they didn't get in trouble. And they started making ice cream. Great substitute, I guess, because they kept making that ice cream. And when the Prohibition ended, they started making their beer again. And they made both all the way up until 1985, and then all of a sudden they just stopped making their ice cream and they had a huge following well august 2nd this company went ahead and bought that business out so it is now all theirs they did a reverse split of one in 150 that's a done deal they changed their name that's a done deal and now they're waiting for the ticker to change and it should have pretty much already happened so we're expecting this at any moment she finished the day today at 0.0265 almost three cents with about 32 percent gains she's on the pink tier she is current she's got a transfer agent verified but we don't have a verified profile yet things are still in the process of settling here so i wouldn't worry too much about that what was the relative volume around the company today <laughs> wow that's not what i was expecting <laughs> she's normally doing 123,000 shares a day that's under the radar this that's being neglected, 7.2 thousand shares, come on. And she actually went up 32% on that little bit of shares. Imagine what she'll do when she gets a ton of volume. What is her share structure, by the way? All right, this is a bit interesting. We've got 13.5 million in the float, which is great, but that's exactly what the outstanding shares is as well. We don't have any restricted shares. That means there's no insider ownership yet. I can't imagine that's the case. I think, again, the information just hasn't been tallied up and caught up yet. But what we do know is it's not going to be any more than 13.5 million. So the maximum the flow did is 13.5, and it's probably less. Financials, you're not going to see anything over here because what they were doing, they're not doing anymore. You can see it was falling, getting less and less on the quarterly. It got down to zero. And their disclosures, well, that's just basically talking about everything we were just talking about. So let's go take a look at that chart because that's where all the activity is. I think this is just going to continue climbing. So we're looking at a 20-day, one-hour chart for ticker ARSND because that's all there is. Now, if we look up the old ticker without the D, there's lots of charting history. But it's ancient history. It really has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. Now, I did look at the last couple of days just before the reverse split just to see what things look like. She was at 0006, fell to 0005, and then crashed to 0002. The next morning, boom! 
We're up here at four and a half cents. What a huge jump. Then she had a huge fall. Fell all the way down here to double zero six one. That's like six, seven hundred percent fall. It was huge. She then went sideways for quite a few days, consolidating, settling, whatever you want to call it. And then we looked at it right here. And I noticed it because we were in a breakout mode. She was losing those little tiny baby teeth, getting these big adult teeth and sitting on top of the 50. So it looked to me like she was ready to give some gains away. And we've had them two days in a row. And I was going to show this to you yesterday, just didn't get my video out. So I'm showing it to you again today. I don't know how far this is going to go. I think the name Yuling is going to draw a lot of people in. The name has been around for almost 200 years. It's associated with beer. It's associated with ice cream. And hey, it's even a Chinese word. So it may get confused with Chinese stocks whenever they start running. All I'm saying is I got a good feeling about this company. So far, she's got two more gain, days of gain after we looked at it. I'm sure she has more to come. But do your own DD. Just don't take my word for anything. All right, this last stock we're looking at, ticker GTII, Global Tech Industries Group, caught my attention today. First, I seen her running. She was making some real strong gains. She finished the day at 91 cents with almost 52% gains. So I dove right in to see if I could find the catalyst. No current news presses, no filings. Now, they did have a news press come out August 8th had some interesting information in it. I do want to share it with you. I looked at their most current financial filing to see if there was anything in there. Couldn't see anything that stood out, though I did find an interesting piece of information in there as well. I thought both of them were interesting enough to share with you. So I'm going to do that right now and see what you think. So this company is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. The B stands for better because you have to audit your financials to be here. You got a real CPA looking at them. So these are numbers that are actual and factual, more trustworthy, more transparent. They also have a verified profile and a transfer agent looking good. And they've got independent directors for uplisting. They may have used them to get to the QB, but if they got plans to go to the NASDAQ, they're going to need them then too. Now, their business description is pretty lame here, actually. They don't even say the word gold. Uh, their subsidiary, GTI, is in the gold business. Now, I'm not quite sure everything that they're doing, but they work with a lot of mines accessing gold so that they can sell it over near the Dubai markets. That's what I read. That's what it is that they're doing. So what was the relative volume today, considering that she didn't have any catalysts? Well, she's normally doing about 98,000 shares. Today, she did 1.2 million, about 10 times much. I mean, it's not a huge number, but it is a big increase. Share structure, what's our float? Not too bad. We got about 64 million in the float. We can live with that. Financials, being in the gold business, you'd expect they're making some money. No. All right, we got three zeros. We got to put behind any of the numbers down here. Thank goodness. So they did $24,000 at the end of last year. And woo woo, they got to keep 19,000 of that. Is it getting any better quarterly? No, actually gotten worse. Not quite sure what's up there. All right, disclosures. What do we got over here? We do have an 8K that came out a few days ago. I looked at that. It really didn't have anything to do with what we were looking at right now. So I'm going to jump on over to the news because that's pretty much where it starts. But I do want to show you a filing that does come from their financials. So the most current piece of news up here is 8.8, but they repeated it on 8.9. So this piece of news was put out twice. And they tell us here on August 8th, Global Tech Industries, a Nevada corporation, announced that on July 28, 22, FINRA declined to effectuate the company's request to pay a digital dividend to its shareholders. FINRA determined that the company action was deficient because the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation is unable to process digital dividends. And that is a problem. There's been a lot of companies that have been wanting to give away tokens and digital dividends, but the SEC and FINRA just can't do it. Now, I actually read about a company a few months ago that came up with a solution for this and they've patented it. I just haven't seen it put into action yet. The company goes on to say, 
To reward its loyal shareholder base and keep its commitment to distributing a dividend, the company is now in active negotiations with a digital securities firm which could afford it the ability to allot digital dividends and fractional shares to all GTII shareholders. Needless to say, we are disappointed in FINRA's decision, but we will continue to actively pursue other methods and partnerships to ensure that our shareholders are rewarded for their loyalty and their patience. And I found another very curious piece of information in their most current financial. We're not going to go through anything but this one highlighted piece of information. None of the executive board members of GTI have received any compensation from the company and have elected to defer any wages or compensation until the company's operations can support such payments. How about that? You've got the subsidiary doing all this work and nobody's getting paid until this company starts making money. I kind of like to see that in my management. They're talking about shareholder value. They're not taking pay until the company's making money. They sound sincere to me. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what we can make of that. What do you know? We got a full chart here. Six months, four hours for GTII. We got a high bubble about six months ago of $2.14 and maybe two, three weeks ago, a low of 43 cents. She was above the 200 for quite a while and then took a long, steady drop here. Oh my goodness. And she hit that low bubble and she's been bouncing off of that ever since. She got a good push Got close to the 200 here, didn't quite make it, fell back down to the 50, and now has a second attempt going for that 200, but has a lot more volume this time than she did last time. Our technicals are looking good. Our MACD and our PPO are both pointing up with a crossover right there and a strong bounce. RSI has just hit 60, and I can't make heads or tails of the ADX right now. Let's look at that 20-day, one hour. So she was under the 50 riding on our 200-day haul, much like the 200-day SMA, except it takes current price into more consideration. And once she got on top of the 50, you got those two big bars, don't you? She rolled that 50 up here to the 200 and shot from there. She went from 60 cents to $1.14, almost 100% in three-day run. She fell all the way back down here to the 200 and has now started bouncing again. And it looks like she gets multiple days of running when she does push up, and this is her first day. Technicals are very strong right now, though they do show a tendency of a pullback for that pullback right there. Five-day, five-minute all right, falling, falling, falling. We hit a low here of 55 yesterday. She jumped as soon as the bell went off at uh, what time we got there? Five minutes after 10, she hit her high of $1. three, starting down here at about 60 cents. So you have about 40, 45% gain, something like that there. And then she dipped. Now, remember, I told you, 10, 10, 05, you normally see a dip across the markets. There's your dip. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fall, but who knows? That's why I always like to get out before the dip. You don't know how far it's going to fall. This just came down a little bit, bounced right back up, and she's just kind of meandering up here at a whole new level, definitely above her 50% mark. Technicals, everything looks like she's cooling off right now. I would not be surprised to see her come right back down to that 200. We do have a crossover. It looks like it's trying. I don't know. I wouldn't put a lot of faith in this. RSI is pretty weak right now. I honestly think this is going to come back down to the 200. She may just bounce right off of that. The volume has been getting less and less right now. But this is a company that isn't taking pay right now until the company starts making revenues. They're looking for ways to get dividends out to their shareholders, whatever kind of dividends they are. They're looking for people to help them, and they're looking for deals. So the company sounds very sincere to me, and I would hope that they would start making money here soon. So GTII could be worth a second look at. Well, I'm sure glad I got this video out today. I missed yesterday's, but at least we got a couple of those A stocks in our listings today. You had AKLI, Digital Medicine, came on the market, hit $54 and is now at four. That could be a great recovery. Then you got a-R-S-N-D, Euling Ice Cream. Everything is settling. They've been climbing for three days. You need to keep your eye on them. Then we've got Hempaco. 
not a penny stock anymore. And it did finish today above its $6, but it hit 41 and fell down hard. And there's only a million shares and it looks like it's at a breakout point right now on the chart. I keep my eye on it. And then GTII, well, they just sound like a bunch of good old boys to me. They're not taking pay for all the work they're doing and they're looking for ways to give us dividends. Ain't nothing wrong with a company like that. Remember folks, I get all of this just by doing DD. You can too. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See you, folks.